Run it back, Philly. No frauds, no fanboys, no intro. Joel Bede had 41 points, nine rebounds, three assists, and two blocks in the game. He was 15 for 18 from the free throw line. He was two for five from the three-point line, and he was absolutely making Zubach his child. People complain all the time about Joel Embiid's free throws. Oh, he shoots so many free throws. He shoots so many free throws. If you watch games, if you just watch games, all you Embiid haters, if you watch games, you'll see watch Joel Embiid. Um, we kept attacking him. We kept running the pick and roll with James Harden. Am I frozen? Am I frozen? We kept attacking Zubach. Uh, we kept <laughs> we kept running the pick and roll with James Harden. We kept attacking Zubach, and uh, you know we took advantage of their weaknesses. The weaknesses were, uh, yeah, it said in the bottom right, OBS disconnected, and then it said OBS reconnected. I don't know what that's about. Um, yeah, we took advantage of the mismatches. We were attacking Zubach all night long with Joel Embiid. I thought in crunch time, when a lot of these games, it turns into, you know, us, uh, the Sixers standing around, Trying to run the pick and roll against a zone. Uh, it turns into a stagnant offense, and then we end up with Joel Embiid just hanging out at the three-point line trying to create offense for the whole team, and, and it and it, it doesn't work out that well because he's not Kevin Durant. He's Joel Embiid. He's a center. Uh, I watched the Clippers switch to a zone like I knew they were going to, and I said if the clip when the Clippers, when they switch to a zone to try to stop the Joel Embiid-James Harden pick and roll, how do we counter the counter? And a couple of times we had we struggled against that zone in the, in the fourth. And then all of a sudden we started stuffing Joel and beat under the rim. There's only two ways to break a zone. Hit threes or get under the get under the rim. Get get under the rim. Straight up get Joel and beat under the rim. So we start forcing Joel and beat under the rim. And then you know the rest of the game we're we're spamming the Joel Embiid, James Harden pick and roll, and they can't stop it because James is such a good, uh, he's so good at passing the basketball, and Joel getting a full head of steam running right at uh, Ivaka Zubac. Uh, he's either going to the foul line or he's scoring. So Joel had 41. Uh, he had 27 in the first half. You know, we thought he was going for 50, uh, but... Another another just phenomenal performance from Joel Embiid on both sides of the floor. Uh, and this is another one that won't be talked about because it's just totally normal for Joel Embiid to do these kinds of things in NBA games. Uh, a forty one perform a forty one point performance is totally normal for Joel Embiid. If Anthony Davis scores 41, ESPN has a circle jerk for about a week. Anyway, last thing about Joel Embiid is, uh, you know, we were talking about how sometimes he's lazy on defense, right? And at the beginning of this game, a couple of offensive rebounds Zubac got, a couple of putbacks, a couple of kind of wide open layups where Joel just kind of moved out of the way and didn't try to defend it. And, uh... You know, we know he tries to low manage himself throughout a game. We know he tries to save his legs for the fourth quarter. My dude, Abe Link, in the chat uh, brought up a good point also that Joel Embiid tries to stay out of foul trouble uh, in the beginning of the game because if, if he gets in foul trouble early, it really affects the entire team and and the rest of the game. Uh, so you could, if you really watched that and you really watched how Joel Embiid played defense in the first half versus how he played defense in the second half, I would say that's exactly how it went down. Joel was kind of being passive in the first half. Some dudes were getting some offensive rebounds. Some dudes were getting some wide open layups. And in the second half, he turned it up a notch. Um, Terrence Mann had a, had a layup over Joel Embiid in the first quarter, maybe the second quarter. Somewhere in the first half, there was a layup over Joel Embiid. And I said, Joel didn't even try to defend that. 
Joel just kind of moved out of the way. He didn't even try to defend that layup. What, what you know, what's going on here? Joel's getting shredded. Zoo, oh, it was a sequence. Zubach hit like a little uh, pivot foot left-handed uh, floater off the glass, and then and then uh, and then Terrence Mann had a layup over him. And I said Joel's getting shredded at the rim. But the second half, Terrence Mann tried to get a layup over Joel and beat again because he thought shit was sweet. You know, he thought, oh. He let me do this layup in the first half. Here I go again. And Joel pinned it on the backboard. So that's the difference between the first and the second half with Joel Embiid. And we can get frustrated with what he looks like in the first half and not defending the rim. Uh, but he really tries to save himself for the fourth. And I think in this game, you could clearly see that that's what he did. I think in this game, you could clearly see that that's what he did. James Harden. Only had six points in this game. Six points, one of six from the field, 0 of four from three. He made one field goal in this game, but he had nine assists. Uh, he was controlling the ball when we needed him to control the ball. He was dropping dimes to Joel Embiid when we needed him to drop dimes to Joel Embiid. I think James Harden, you know, you can, you can look at that stat line and say, wow, James had a horrendous game. But I don't really feel like that was the case. I don't really feel like that was the case. I think watching it back, you might see the Clippers defense paying a lot of attention to James Harden and James doing other things to get the ball out and swing it. You know, he only had nine assists. Uh, he might have had 20 like hockey assists. You know what I mean? The, where he makes the kick out and they swing the ball around and things like that. So I think James Harden was affecting the game offensively in a lot of different ways that don't show up on the stat sheet. I didn't even realize he only had six points in the game until I looked at the stat sheet. You know, uh, I thought James Harden was doing his thing in this game. I guess I just didn't realize that he wasn't scoring because he was doing so many other things um, to impact the game positively and defensively. James Harden's been trying on defense this season, uh, and it's been great. You know, James Harden, who has been slandered most of his career for not trying on defense, has been trying on defense, and it's been great. And I love to see it. Uh, there was a, a couple sequences in the fourth quarter where P.J. Tucker came back in the game, uh, which I thought Matisse Thibel was playing good defense on Kawhi Leonard. And then uh, Doc Rivers put P.J. Tucker back in the game with five minutes left, which I feared for my life at that point. I said, no way. He just put P.J. Tucker back in the game. Kawhi Leonard's about to go off and shred us. And Kawhi was looking for mismatches like he was the whole game. And there's a play that I remember specifically. He set a screen for him so he could get a mismatch on Harden. And Harden, I think, played better defense on Kawhi Leonard than P.J. Tucker did. And forced him into a very difficult fadeaway uh, jump shot from the free throw line. So shout out to James Harden for being the game manager that he was in this game. You know, uh, getting the ball to Joel, spamming the pick and roll. Kicking the ball out to open three-point shooters. Playing defense. Putting clamps on Kawhi Leonard in the fourth quarter. And when Maxie was running in that third quarter and James Harden came in, he didn't really try to steal his shine. He didn't really come in and try to be the man. He, he came in and wanted to, he wanted to continue to give him the ball and put him in spots to score. So I think James is playing a very mature basketball game at this point of his career, and it just makes everybody on the floor better. That's how I feel about James in this game. Run it back, Philly. No fraud, no fanboys, no intro.